Hi and welcome, this is a Blender tutorial about rigging and weight painting for a hard surface model. First we open up Blender 2.78 and I'm going to create a kind of robot arm. It consists of three submodels, the upper arm, a joint and the forearm. I'm going to create this now here really fast. I use a simple cube to create the upper arm. I add a bevel to this and for the lower part I switch to face selection mode, press the I key, then E and extrude out this kind of, I don't know the word, cone or peg or whatever. Okay, and for the forearm, I will just duplicate this object here, press Shift D, then rotate around the X axis, and that's it. Now we have an upper arm and a forearm, and for the joint, I will add a sphere. Press Shift A and add it. Okay, now I change the size accordingly and after that I will apply smooth shading. Okay, that's nice. Now let's switch to the wireframe mode and change the location of the forearm and the upper arm so that the joint is yeah, almost in the middle. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now let's change the hierarchy of the submodels. First select the joint, then the upper arm and press Ctrl P to let the upper arm be the parent of the joint. Now when I move the upper arm, the joint will also follow the movement. Okay, great. And now select the lower arm and then the joint and again Ctrl P. Now the hierarchy is correct. When we move the joint, the forearm will follow and so on. But when we, for example, would rotate the forearm, the pivot point doesn't match. So we have to change this. We use a trick that you perhaps know from a previous tutorial. I will position the 3D cursor and then I will set a new pivot point. Here, let me show you when I rotate. No, that's not what we want. Okay, now let's switch to edit mode. Then I will select this upper face here. Okay, and then I move the 3D cursor to that location. Then I go back to object mode and set my pivot point to the 3D cursor. Okay, and when I rotate now, you can see this is exactly what we were going for. Okay, that's great. Now we have the correct hierarchy. We can rotate our submodels, but we are not able with this approach to apply an inverse kinematics. This means just grab this forearm and move these joints and bones around. That's not possible. To be able to do this, we have to add bones and this is exactly what we are going to do now. Before I do this, I will rename my submodels This is the lower arm and the upper arm. Now let's press Shift A and add the first bone. We don't see it, we know this from previous tutorials, so select the armature tab and select X-ray. Now it is visible, 
then rotate it around the x-axis, therefore press R, then X, and then type 180. Then bring it up to the upper arm, then switch to edit mode and scale it along this upper arm. Just like that to the center of the joint. Then we extrude out the next bone by pressing E and then the C key to the bottom of the forearm. Okay, then we switch to object mode and select all the objects. After that, the armature and then press Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. Now the armature is the parent of all these submodels and when I switch to pose mode I can already rotate the bones and the model will follow the movement. But there is something wrong when I rotate this forearm for example. You can see that this joint is deformed and I don't want this. And this is where weight painting comes into play. We can select the model and then weight painting and now let me explain this very clearly. You can see that this forearm is painted completely in red. This means it is completely affected by the movement and the rotation of this bone here. But I don't want the joint to be affected or to be deformed when this bone is rotated. So I will choose subtract to paint this completely in blue. And this means now this joint isn't deformed, it isn't affected by this bone rotation, by the transformation of this bone. Okay? Now I can transform this bone in pose mode and the joint model isn't affected by that. But the forearm is affected because it is painted in red. And you can paint it in red color when you choose add instead of subtract when using uh, weight painting. Now let's select the upper bone and you can see that the lower part of this joint model isn't affected by the rotation of the upper bone. But what I want in this case is that the joint is affected completely by this movement. And again I switch to weight painting after I selected this joint model. And here you can see how the weight painting is applied to the model. And what I do is I choose add to paint it completely in red. Okay? I increase the strength and paint the whole model red. And when I move my upper bone now, the joint model will follow my movement and also the upper arm which is painted in red fully. Well, and basically that is the use case of weight painting. You define the amount in which the model is affected by the transformation of the bones to which it is parented to. Okay, and now that we have this correct weight painting applied, we can also enable Auto Arcade for the armature. And now I can move the bones around as I like, press the G key and apply really complex transformations for this model, like I do here. So there is one thing left that I want to show you and these are transformations for the meshes. Therefore let's select this lower bone, switch to edit mode, press W key and subdivide to make two bones out of one. Then switch to object mode and select the forearm. Then again to edit mode and press Ctrl R to add some edge loops. We need more geometry for this model here. Then again to object mode, keep the forearm selected, hold shift key and select the armature. Then press Ctrl P 
and again parent this with automatic weights. Now switch to pose mode, select this bone and rotate it and see what happens. Also when I press the G key and move it, I can apply really interesting transformations and animations. Okay, that's the last trick I want to show you for this tutorial. I really hope you like it and if you do, please let me know, write some comments and subscribe to my channel. Here's the link to subscribe and I also added a link to a tutorial of the category Blender that might be interesting for you. Thanks a lot for watching and I really hope to see you soon here back on my channel on JNM.